I'm here at the Long Beach Expo, one of the largest coin shows in the United States and the best coin show on the West Coast. We're going to take a look at the centerpiece, the crown jewel of the world's most valuable private coin collection. What's up you guys, it's Ocean here. After I filmed this video, I realized there was copyrighted music playing in the background, but that's okay. I think a voiceover format will allow me to share a lot more detailed information, so let's take a look. The world's most valuable private coin collection is called the Tyrant Collection, and the main attraction within the Tyrant Collection is the King of Siam set. In 1834, John Forsyth, a close friend of President Andrew Jackson, asked the Mint Director to create two identical diplomatic gifts of complete sets of US coins to be sent to the King of Siam, which is now Thailand, and the Sultan of Muscat, which is now the capital of Oman. One of these coins is known as the King of American Coins, and seeing these in person is a very exciting opportunity, so let's dive right into the King of Siam set. The first coin is an 1834 Proof 66 Red Brown Half Cent. The entire coin is bathed in a lovely copper brown color with tinges of lemon undertones in the fields beneath an earthy red ochre. The coin is that of classic faded copper as one would expect from a coin housed in a velvet and leather wooden box for 130 years. The second and final copper coin in the set is an 1834 Proof 66 Red Brown Large Scent. The coin has rather perfect surfaces with classic faded original red that today appears as burgundy steel colors with lavender remnants. A highly appealing example in its own right, this lovely proof was produced using a brand new set of dyes which were then used for regular production coins after a few proofs were struck for these sets and a few others. Next up is the smallest coin in the set and is one of two replacement coins which were not the original coins presented to the King of Siam. This is an 1834 Proof 66 Half Dime. This one has deep gold toning with tinges of blue around the rims. The strike is perfectly bold and the surfaces are outstanding. The 1834 Dime ties the King of American Coins for the highest graded example in the King of Siam set at Proof 67. The surfaces are pristine and the toning is elegant with deeper gold and russet at the rims reddish to crimson in the detail with the centers bright with silver frost. The quarter keeping with the theme is an 1834 example. This coin is graded proof 65. This is a classic gem proof strike with all devices bold and the fields fully mirrored. Toned with a dash of deep forest green, matching the toning colors of the 1804 dollar in the set with the centers white and frosty. The 1834 half dollar is also graded proof 65. It's classic gem proof quality with mirrored fields, satiny frost on the devices, and lovely smoky and earthy fields with tinges of rose silver on the face, with deeper reds in the dentils. Within the centerpiece set of the world's most valuable private coin collection lies the king of American coins. This is the 1804 draped bust dollar graded proof 67. What's interesting about this coin is it's actually a novital. Now if you don't know, a novital is sort of like a restrike but there's a difference. Restrike coins are made by simply using old dies from the past, thereby backdating new coins. Novitals are made by creating a new die and engraving a past year onto that die. For this reason, Novital coins leave room for varieties to be created due to the subtle differences in the die. The U.S. Mint director wanted to include an 1804 silver dollar to make the complete set just like Andrew Jackson wanted. He needed an 1804 because at the time, that was the last year a silver dollar was minted. The problem was that silver dollars minted in 1804 were 1803 restrikes, so there weren't any 1804 dies. The Mint actually didn't know this at the time, so they looked for an 1804 die, and when they couldn't find one, they created a new die, thereby making the 1804 silver dollar a novital coin. The surfaces are amazing, perfectly clean and toned with gorgeous antique hues of rose gold and silver with 
aquamarine fields with silver gray and various warm undertones bathing the entire surface. This date, of course, the king of American coins, has been sought after since these first became numismatically known in the early 1840s. Only eight are known today of the class one struck in 1834. An additional group of seven more 1804 dollars class two and three were struck in the late 1850s or early 1860s to satisfy insatiable collector demand. This is one of the finest known. Now on to the four gold coins in the set. This is the 1834 Quarter Eagle with splendid classic yellow hues with traces of russet gold around the devices. The strike is precise and full. The surfaces are an amazing gem quality with delicate patina earned over the generations. This is one of the finest of seven proofs known today. This is an 1834 Classic Head Half Eagle graded Proof 65 Cameo. Gorgeous contrast between mirrored fields and boldly frosted devices, as the original 1834 Half Eagle proofs were already struck and distributed, all two of them, long before the order came in for these sets for additional proofs. New dies were prepared and proof coins struck. A total of six are known from this second die pairing, one of which is included in this set. The other coin from the Sultan of Musket set has not been seen to this day and it's feared lost. While most of the silver and copper coins from the Sultan of Musket set have turned up about a century ago, along with the Eagle from 1804, on this variety, the curl is two-thirds of the way over the four in the date. The coin presented here is the finest of those known of the second variety. The 1804 $10 Gold Eagle also has an interesting story. This example is graded Proof 64 Cameo, and this is a coin that's as historic as the 1804 Silver Dollar. Mint engraver William Neese was tasked by Mint Director Moore to create a proof set of all the coins authorized by the United States. The last record of silver dollars and gold $10 eagles being struck was 1804. An old leftover half dollar reverse was found with just a bit of rust on it and could be polished up for the new 1804 eagle strike. But the obverse die found needed a final four digit punched in and had considerable die rust after 30 years of Philadelphia summers and winters. So mint engraver Nice got out his finest engraving tools and repaired the obverse die, removing the rust, engraving missing detail, and polishing it up. He took impressions in silver as he worked to check on the outcome. Eventually he was pleased and gold planchets were prepared and these fantastic 1804 $10 gold restrikes were struck in proof. It's noteworthy that original 1804 Eagle struck for circulation had a crosslet 4 in the date, but Nice didn't have any examples of these older coins available, and thus used the so-called plain 4 from the 1834 half dollar punch set to finish the date of the leftover die. Today there are just three examples known of this incredible coin, made from original dies some 30 years after the dies were originally engraved. A fourth example is rumored, but has not been seen in years. The final coin in the King of Siam set actually isn't a coin, it's a gold medal commemorating the second inauguration of President Jackson. This specimen is the other replacement in the set because the original was lost. In fact, we don't even know for sure if this medal was the 11th piece in the King of Siam set. However, based on the size of the empty velvet hole in the presentation box and the layout of other gold coins at the top, this medal logically fits into this collection. The Andrew Jackson second inaugural medal is graded Proof 63 Cameo. The obverse is the cameo head of Jackson with dentils around. A more historic set of coins simply cannot be imagined. The Tyrant collection is worth over $100 million, and the owner chooses to remain anonymous. With a $100 million coin collection, I would think the owner is a billionaire. Something I found interesting is there were two ladies managing the coin show attendee traffic 
around the Tyrant Collection, along with several security guards. I asked them a few questions, and they were very helpful in assisting me to understand what I was looking at. And I asked them this question. Do you know who owns the Tyrant Collection? One of the ladies said, the owner is anonymous. Then I said, but you know who owns it, right? They both acknowledged yes. Then one of them said, but we can't say who. It's a very mysterious collection, but I learned that the owner of the Tyrant Collection may not be as far removed as we may have thought. What was your favorite coin in the King of Siam set, and did you enjoy this video? Let me know in the comments. Stack wide as the ocean.